I started with TriMet at the end of April. I've been with TriMet for uh, 15 months now. I've been with TriMet just over four months. With the advent of uh, another Lane Jensen versus TriMet legal battle, I feel compelled that I must come out of my little sub-universe that I survive in these days and make a public comment. Um, about uh, the, the Lane Jensen, the latest Lane Jensen uh, problem. What you're seeing there is a uh, a letter from uh, somebody by the name of Stoll Rise, certified mail to an uh, address that Lane doesn't live at, by the way. And what it is, it's a demand that he remove this video. I'm playing that video when I started this video. That's one of the videos that Lane has, but what Lane did is he cut in various segments of uh, some of our uh, dispatch recordings. And those of you who have been following our underground, I call it the TriMet Underground blog scene because there's only a, a handful of us. And we basically exist in a little, little, I don't know what you call it, but it's definitely not mainstream world. Okay, we're out of mainstream. And so uh, he... Uh, has been told that he can't run his videos because they're too much like TriMet videos. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, I know they're embarrassing to TriMet. They're definitely embarrassing to TriMet. They definitely don't make them look good. And, uh, you know, he's just trying to show the other side of the... There is two... <laughs> their little video is, is very nice and appealing. And those of us that work there understand that, yeah, they're not, it's not all lies and fabrications. It's just, just a tweaking of <laughs> the reality of, about things. And... Uh, you know, that's uh, something that some of us might have a problem with. I have a couple of really good friends uh, that have been at TriMet, and uh, I guess I could say they recruited me. <laughs> now, you gotta, you got to admit, that's good, the way that they cut from that particular character to the join our family little segment and <laughs> you know I laugh every time I see this stuff because I know you know I know the reality and so does everybody I know know the reality and then we watch these things and you know all I can say is it's great marketing man and it, you know I mean the guy looks like a nice guy right I looks like a perfectly nice guy driving the boat my last job was at a grocery store and a um, couple of people that worked with TriMet would shop at this grocery store and one of the guys was just like, you would be an awesome bus driver. Okay, okay, I mean, totally believable story. I mean, the, the guy is kind of a, a profile of the guy that could use a job and that's really what these bus driving jobs are good for and it's true. you got to give TriMet credit for that, okay, because they, they will give you this <laughs> shitty ass job, but I mean it was a job that gives you some decent wages in three years. Used to give you great benefits, not anymore, but it's better than no benefits, right? So I mean they're a place that you can you can be uh you don't have to be a college graduate to get there, you know, and that's that's important right now in case you haven't been paying attention to the uh to the goings on around us. I mean the uh, gentrification movement is, is not kind, especially if you're not from the right circles a kid I would run to the front of the bus to watch the drivers wave at each other when the buses passed. I always had like a good feeling about TriMet so I had been thinking about it. Well okay did she, yeah, she had a good feeling you know I like now her image you see that's a different marketing image there you know so think of this think of this like a marketing class that's what I like to do with these public transportation things because public transportation really is government okay it's government no different from the city of Portland. It's no different from the state of Oregon. It's no different from the federal. These people all do exactly the same behaviors, okay? That's, that's the truth. So you look at it from a marketing standpoint. Okay, she uh, is, is she's definitely appealing to a different class of citizens. Am I right? My biggest concern about driving the bus would be uh, it's a big bus, and there is a lot you need to know about the bus. I'd say my biggest. 
Yeah, man, it's a big bus. It's big. And there's a lot you got to know about the big bus, so he's not completely off the wall. His concerns were just night driving and, you know, uh, angry people. <laughs> One of the biggest concerns I had about operating the bus was the geography of Portland. But what I've learned since then is we have very good tools that help us navigate from point A to point B. This is going to be a back-in-the-day story. Well, back in the day, man, <laughs> we didn't have any tools. We barely had any <laughs> steering wheels. Remember those 17 and 1800 steering wheels? <laughs> you had to fight those things to keep them on the road. I mean, okay, so I don't know what tools he's talking about. Do they, do they, are they using the GPSs finally in the buses? You know, Trimet doesn't tell me anything. I mean, I'm completely on the outs over there. All my information only comes from the subversive element, and that's a very tiny element. Let's, let's be truthful, okay? A lot of people don't really like what Trimet does, but they're not total subversives. You know, I'm subversive in the sense that I really think that Neil McFarlane... Oh, shit. Oh, there's Lane. Oh, I'll call you back, Lane. Okay, let's take the call. Hey, <laughs> hey Lane, you know, you just happened to call in the middle of me making a, a movie, and I'm actually still rolling. And the movie's kind of related to you because I, I just felt like I needed to make a movie today. So, what's up? What's up? Is it about the, uh, is it about the videos and, what, and uh, the lawyer and the letter? Yeah, that? yes. Well, good, because that's what I'm calling about, too. That's okay, well, we just, now, this is great timing, man. I, this was not, I'm going to tell you people right now, this was not planned. I mean, I just sat down randomly. No, no, uh, he that just, was not planned he, at yeah, all. He, I hardly ever hear from Lane anymore these days, but here he is. So, what are you going to say, Lane? You're, you're being filmed. Well, wonderful. I love being filmed. So, um, I was just doing a little research at a stoplight. And um, the fair use law actually covers my two videos because oh. this, my two videos are a parody mm -hmm. of Trimet. I, and I'm making fun of Trimet. I so hear you. Therefore, because I am making fun of Trimet, I am allowed to you know, use their copyrighted material. Okay, now uh, let me stop you right there. Right now, we've had this discussion before. Where I said, are you positively positive that TriMet can't use some legal legality against you? And you said, yeah. And then the next thing I knew, you was in jail. So are you positively positive? Yes, this is a fair use law. <laughs> this is a fair use law under the copyright rule. Okay. Uh, this is a link. Uh, the link I looked at was from the Stanford University Library, which Stanford's known for their business and, and law and all that. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like a very reputable source. But you already know as well as I do that TriMet doesn't follow laws, right? You know that. I know. I know. Here, here, let me read exactly what they say. All right. Okay? Yeah. Parody. A parody is a work that ridicules another, usually well-known work, by imitating it in a comic way. Judges understand that, by its nature, parody demands some taking from the original work oh. being parody. Unlike other forms of fair use, a fairly extensive use of the original work is permitted in a parody to or in order to conjure up the original. Wow. Original. Yeah. I don't know. That sounds pretty fair to me. But, the work. Huh? That's work for work. Yeah, yeah. That sounds pretty good. But we, you know, I, I don't, you know, we know TriMet is not bound by laws, okay? They are the government personified. They, they do what they want. Now, the case against you, Lane, for example, a completely bull, I, bullshit case. They manufactured it, you know, and they can do it again, so you never can trust these people. I agree. But I agree. I, I agree. This is a little more complicated than the last one, but, I, you know, let's see what they do. So you're saying you're, saying you're not going to take that down, right? That stays. I'm not going to take them down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the description that this is a parody of TriMet's work. Okay. And that way, when I put that in the description on both of those, that will, that right there says that this is not TriMet's original work. All right. Deal. Well, thanks for calling, okay. Lane. You, you just happened to call at the exact perfect time. And I know life, well, works, life works like that sometimes. Sometimes it does. It does, that you know. By yeah. tomorrow morning, hopefully by tomorrow morning, I will have the, 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 the updated version. And also, 
on the video themselves as well, I'm going to put the word parody as well. So Good. there's no yeah. confusion <laughs> because in the letter, they said the distribution through to something that tried that did. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put in there that this is a parody and that this is not, this is not um, trying that, you know, Comments work. That way, now they legally, according to the letter, the letter of the law. Again, like we said, comments doesn't like to play by the law because whenever something's not right, they like to do whatever the hell they want. And we know this from experience. Um, you know, yeah. by the letter of the law, yeah. by, by me putting the word parody in there, I am protected. Yeah. And I'm also going to once I do that, I'm going to write an email back to the lawyer. To say that under the fair use law, fairly fair use law, I included I included, you know, I've included the reference of this being a parody, therefore now this is legal to do. All right. Thanks, Lane. And I will and I will copy you in that so you can update the form and um this is going to be All right, well let's see what they do next. Okay, we're gonna see what they do next. All right, Lane, I got I gotta finish what I'm doing here. But that, that's, you right. just watch my next, my next thing is, you know, watch it. You'll, you'll see how this fit in. I will do that. I'll be home in 10 minutes. Well, it will be a little bit longer than that, but it will be up soon. Okay, bye, Lane. Bye. Well, that's interesting. I mean, that really wasn't planned, folks. So there you have what, what Lane is going to do. I mean, he shouldn't do anything about it. I mean, what, what do they think he is? NBC News or something? What is, or is it just a TriMet power play? We're a powerful trimet, and we're going to get our way, and we can abuse the laws as we see fit to fuck with you, Lane, and to fuck with Shirley, to fuck with Al, because they can. All right, look, I don't want to, we're making a movie here. I'm making a critique about the trimet um, training video, which Lane is now in trouble for, so I want to continue with that. The average day in the training, um, we had uh, a number of classroom days. Other days, we had driving days. They take you through different neighborhoods where you can operate the bus safely. We did use the bus simulator in the training. It's an effective tool, especially at the very beginning when you have not had a lot of uh, time behind the wheel. Of the so so there, there's the now famous Alan Morgan Bus simulator. Uh, you know, I've, I heard the story through the grapevine about his connection with the company that made that bus simulator, and apparently he had a lot to do with uh, with the production of that, and he made sure the contract went through. And we don't know how much it was because we don't. Nobody's told us. It's never been published. They're not going to tell you these things unless you do a public records request, you see. They're not going to just say, hey, we paid this amount of money for that, because they don't, they don't want to do that. Because people might start asking, asking more questions, so they, they try to, well, you know, if you do a public records request, maybe we'll tell you. And I don't want to bother with that anymore. Look, I'm not, <laughs> I will go back to the board, I decided, at some point. But I'm not, I'm not tired of fighting with them in illegal, okay? I've had too many legal romps with TriMet, and I'm tired of that. So if somebody wants a Polo record request, you do it. Anyway, where was I going with this? I, I, I don't know. Bus. There was a few times I wanted to uh, give up, and my trainer wouldn't let that happen. He built my confidence up, and um, that's what I needed. The best thing. <laughs> so somebody out there, somebody verify for me this is a real bus driver, okay? Um, I need to know that this is a real employee of TriMet. The thing that they tell you over and over again is if you get uncomfortable, you get a spot um, where it's like too much, you just stop the bus and they'll walk you through it. Nothing is wrong with stopping, you know, and once I got that through my head, driving a bus has been really, really easy. You kind of form this little bond with your class and everyone encourages everyone else, everyone celebrates everyone's little victories. One of the well, I suppose that's true to some extent. That, that, that's accurate. I mean, you do go through this with other people, and those other people that are experiencing what you're experiencing are bonding with you because when you spend time with people, you bond with them. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are. If you're spending time in a group, you're most likely going to bond with the group, you, unless you're like some person who can't talk to people or whatever. I don't know. But most people become friendly with the people they're associating with, and... Uh, that's true. And, you know, I had been an experienced driver 
when I came to try, I had already, I knew what transit bus driving was. I, you know, I, of course, found the whole training trite because to me it was like, look, I know all about this job. I've done this job. But I, I dutifully, you know, you got to do it their way. Anybody that's been a TriMet knows, just do it their way and they won't bother you. You know, you don't, don't criticize them, you know. So I went through their silly training. I mean, I hated it. I really did. I hated the line training. Oh, I had this, I had some real mean ass bitches. Oh, oh I'm sorry. But and that's, they had this one woman that was just like a torturer. It was a 12 hour, like I had never driven a bus longer than seven hours a day. That was my full time shift in Santa Rosa. You worked seven and you got paid eight. Okay, it was a beautiful job. This was in the 80s. Anyway, uh, I had this person that was, it started at six in the morning and went to six at night, and it was the 10. I think the 10 isn't that, I don't know what it does nowadays, but it went on both sides of the. You know, it was a big long route, and it was 12 hours of driving, and she made me drive the whole thing, okay, and I almost died, and I almost quit there, too. Luckily, she was only one day. <laughs> My favorite moments during training is when I passed the CDL driving test. That was a great stepping point of knowing that, hey, I can do this. When I entered training, I kind of just showed up every day, ready to learn, ready to take on the challenge, and every day was fun. Honestly, I didn't have a bad day at all. If you're interested, just go for it. It's a great place to be, and uh, the training staff really does an excellent job of preparing you to um, operate the bus safely. If you want to be your own boss, and you have good people skills, and you want to watch the seasons change and see things you don't get to see, definitely become a bus driver. It's like an adventure every day in the driver's seat for me. TriMet TV. That that beginning there was classic Lane Jensen. That was classic Lane Jensen opening. That that's TriMet material, but he molded it around. Okay, but that not they don't have that on the recruiting videos. This is a Lane uh, creation, and I you know I used to love it Lane's movies. If you if you remember Lane's little <laughs> flash in the pan career as a TriMet blogger, he went on for a year before they fucking fucked him. But anyway, he used to make movies in the, at the beginning of this whole uh, experience, and those movies were fantastic, man. I don't know if any remember his movies when he was riding around, <laughs> when he was riding around the system. God, those were good. So he, he's really good with, with making this stuff, and that's that's one of his creations. That's excellent. Okay, we, we don't need to hear that whole thing again. That that was one of the, that might be the most dramatic dispatch call of all time. Uh, that one there, that, that really, <laughs> really spoke the, the language. You know, people wonder why I'm so fascinated by it, because this is real life, okay? This is not script. I understand what people are going through, and the people that enjoy this material understand that too. And I know most people don't, ah, this is boring shit, who cares? But uh, those of us that have been sitting there, it's intense, man. Your job as a bus driver is intense. They tell you that it's not a job that's of any value. The fact of the matter is it's one of the most intense jobs in the country, and I'm not making that up. Forget about the propaganda and the union. And, you know, I'm talking about the person sitting in the transit bus seat, dealing with the public, dealing with the traffic. It is intense. And... Uh, Really, it's, it's a profound experience if you're approaching it in the proper way. You have to be approaching it in the proper way to understand that. You know, I can't remember. I, I, gotta, I know what he looks like. I got a good, real good picture of what he looks like. TriMet TV. And that's a lane edit there. That TriMet TV is a lane edit into, into the recruitment video. Fuck, I'm out of 
I mean, really. That, <laughs> you know, I'm not laughing at you. I just, <laughs> you just know. <laughs> you just know what the poor woman is dealing with. Is that that that's really? <laughs> I don't know, man. I can I can see why Trina doesn't like that being spread around, but uh, that's really it. That's a goddamn good clip. Um, we're ready to hang up. Wait ten seconds. Call me back. Hang up. Train ninety one. We hand up. We waited ten seconds. We got back in. We locked on and we are rolling. Everything has cleared up. Uh, train ninety one. I'm not sure. Who is this? Is it? Let me speak to your trainer. Seven four one four. I am the trainer. Do not do that again, please. You do not. Absolutely do not get to do that without walking through every step with me. So, for information, next time, please walk with me through the checklist before we do this. Teaching people to do that on the main line is absolutely unacceptable. I, I understand what you're saying. Talk to me like I'm a grown man. We didn't even tell us to ask them. We were following our own checklist. So I am trying to do the right thing with my students and train. So um, thank you very much. Now that that's pretty good uh, clip about uh, operating Max. Actually, okay, that's that that structure over at the light rail is a dif different experience. You know, the controllers are the kings of the light rail system, and that particular controller. Uh, we were discussing her on Twitter. You know, she's like, you know, I had a third grade teacher like her, okay? Back when, you know, when I was in third grade, capital, you know, not corporal punishment was still okay, all right? Uh, that was a teacher that when you did something stupid or did something, she whack you, man, okay? And you wouldn't do it again, okay? Because you learned. So, um, we, you know, you can say this or that about her technique, but I imagine it makes an impression on the operators. But, I mean, it's a good clip because it shows you that the kind of uh, psychological stuff you have to go through. And that, you know, these kind of psychological games don't just apply to rail. They apply to management and bus operators, too. I, I know all about that. Believe me, the psychological games they play. Uh so that that's a good clip only for that reason. It's not it's not a real clip that has oh you're going to get killed on the job significance, but it shows you a little bit about the inside workings of the of the company. TriMet TV. That was the uh, famous Leonard James stabbing on the 33. And did you, the way Lane put that clip together was just magnificent. He had the video up in the corner, and he was playing the dispatch call. I mean, that, that's a great, great creation, uh, the way Lane was able to do those movies. And uh, the, the case of Leonard James is kind of, uh, a kind of a sad story and another example of how the TriMet will take advantage of you and throw you away when they're done with you because in the end there they made they forced him out and it wasn't pretty and um, he was he was a very well-liked person and I, I knew him and I liked him and he was he was one of those people you can not like he, he's just likable somebody like me it's easy to not like Okay, but somebody like Leonard, how do you not like somebody like Leonard? He was always nice to everybody. So he he had hard feelings about that. I don't blame him. And they and that's part of the thing about working at TriMet for you newbies over there is like they you have to remember the institution TriMet has has a caste system. And if you're not if you're not one of the technocratic class, you're part of the blue collar. You're wearing the blue shirt. They don't really consider you as a human being over there, and, and they'll dump you the minute you become a liability. So they, they don't consider your humanity. That's an important thing to understand. I mean, people say TriMet, like, there is no TriMet. It's an institution. 
and it's in institutions generally the bigger the institution the less humane they get it's just a law and that's the way it is so you need to understand that that time it will throw you away if you become a liability to them TriMet TV. There again, we have uh, another uh, example of Lane's uh, very advanced video skills. The way he has the, the, uh, the police in the corner and then he's scrolling the job benefits. That's just brilliant, Lane. That's brilliant. Anyway, okay, so that has nothing to do with, we, We've watched the recruiting video, and so Lane was reacting to the recruiting video with that video, okay, which is a pretty good, a pretty good rebuttal to TriMet. So what's tri TriMet must be pissed because he's using the ding, ding, TriMet TV, tri, you know, the TriMet TV. So they, they don't like that. Okay, now, obviously, <laughs> that's a parody. Okay, so he's right. That's obviously not their production, and he's not trying to say it's their, their production. So once again, we see, I don't blame them. I mean, it looks bad for them. It's worth a try, but, you know, you got Lane the first time. But let's see you try to get him this time. Okay, you ready for this, Lane? I, I, you know, I'm not over there right now, so I, I can't bail you out at the moment. I have to fly all the way over there just to get your ass out. I don't really want to bother with that. Um... But I don't think this is a civil civil matter. So try me if you want to sue Lane. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> what are you gonna get out of it? He got nothing to give you. Okay, <laughs> he's just a working man, just like the rest of us out here. We don't we don't have any six figure incomes and fancy pensions, man. We're just living hand to mouth. <laughs> All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion is approved unanimously. You, you just approved the falsified budget. You just right. approved a falsified budget, Bruce. The general manager is making two hundred eight thousand dollars, not one ninety five. When are you going to get that corrected? Thank you. So let's move on to work. You are not being transparent, bro. The budget needs to be approved as the budget is on the 70 manager, not the 195. Where's that 13,000 coming from, bro? Neil, Dave. Well, let's be able to get back and talk to you.